Before I begin, I want to urge you to make sure you've played through Undertale at least once before you watch this video. I'll be spoiling major points of the game, but both the game and this video will be much more enjoyable if you've played through it first yourself. My first hour in Undertale was an interesting one. I bought the game out of recommendation from another YouTuber who shares a lot of my tastes. All I really knew about the game was that it was kind of like Earthbound, you could spare every enemy in the game, and that it was supposedly very good. After the short, somewhat expected betrayal of Flowey and the intervention by Toriel in the beginning, I went through the motions the game thought I would. I didn't kill anything, I giggled at all the cute little jokes, and I solved all the simple puzzles that led me to Toriel's home. Toriel being the only welcoming and friendly being I had encountered thus far. I searched around her house a bit and found a few more jokes, but I also found a few clues that led me to believe something tragic had happened to her. The overly sized bed, empty picture frames, and children's toys were something of a dead giveaway. Here, I began to see the similarities to Earthbound, in that it's a very lighthearted RPG with very mature and sometimes dark themes peppered throughout. Those dark tidbits of Earthbound were what I loved most about it, so I started to get more excited about this game as I explored the things in the home that I could interact with, some light, some heavy in their connotations. When you ask to leave Toriel's home and how to get back to your own, she grows distant and starts heading towards the only exit to the rest of the underground where all monsters in the world reside. When followed, she urges you to return to your room, and of course, through your actions, you decline. Naturally, this leads to what can be considered the first boss fight of the game. You face Toriel, the only character in the game so far that has shown you any amount of care or support in battle. And on my first attempt at this fight, I must admit, I was very confused as to how to spare her. Eventually, I did the unthinkable and murdered Toriel. She falls to her knees, begs you not to allow someone named Asgore to succeed, and fades away, her soul shattering permanently. There have been very few games in my life that made me feel the kind of guilt I felt when murdering this mother figure out of confusion and not knowing what else to do. I didn't want to accept it. I closed and reopened the game, found an option to reset the world through the menus, and immediately did it. But what I found upon booting the game back up left me a bit surprised. On meeting Flowey in the beginning a second time, I noticed some of his dialogue had been changed. He remarked that he knew what I had done. That I had killed her and couldn't live with myself or the decision I had made. The game then proceeded like normal, I caught up to myself and figured out how to spare her this time. I continued playing, but this instance of the game being almost eerily aware of my actions and how they made me feel gave me everything I needed to know about Undertale. What you do, who you harm, and how you harm them all have consequences. And for me, those consequences occurred within the game as well as within myself. Like I said, that feeling of guilt felt very real, and the fact that the game knew I felt guilty based on what I had clicked only served to amplify that guilt. And these themes of consequence and guilt are prevalent throughout the game and its story, as well as within the gameplay itself. Perhaps it's just me, but all the fourth wall breaks in this game made me really feel like I had ultimate say in what happens to these characters. And I think the game being an RPG really enhances this. If the game were more like, say, Zelda, with all the enemies present on the overworld and having an attack to defeat them with no battle interface, I don't think the game and its story would have been nearly as effective. You probably could have just walked past most of the enemies in the game, and the ones you couldn't simply walk past would likely be overcome through some sort of non-violent puzzle. And this sounds interesting, but I don't think the way you physically play the game would have as gracefully coincided with its themes this way. Being in a battle and seeing the battle screen with all of your options clearly laid out for you and it being made very clear from the beginning what they'd mean and what they do made me feel like an almost omniscient figure in the game telling my character what to do. And the fact that the name you pick in the beginning isn't even the name of the character you're playing as throughout the entire game heightens this as well. I feel like the constant addressing of the player themselves is supposed to make you feel like not a character avatar like almost every other game, but as yourself, you, having your own feelings towards the characters in this world, have ultimate control over what happens to them. To me, this makes the game feel almost like a god game, like those city management games or something like Spore, just on a much smaller, more personal, more story-driven scale. Like each person who plays it is their own character within the game, which gives this incredible sense of individuality and community at the same time. 
The game looks like a Super Nintendo game throughout most of it, and while the music has a lot more quality to it than something that was possible on a 16-bit system, you could almost mistake it for a game from long ago at first glance. But when I think back to games like Earthbound, Chrono Trigger, Super Mario World, or A Link to the Past, I really don't feel like those games are in the same category as Undertale. That's not to say any of those games are better or worse, but the generational divide to me between these games is very apparent after I've played it and experienced how it made me feel. I cried like a baby at the end of Earthbound, and Chrono Trigger's themes of consequence and changing fate have a lot to them, but Undertale changed me as a person in a way that I feel is just as significant as when I played my very first video game. I feel like I've re-experienced discovering games with Undertale. I've never played anything like it, and it tells me that games really do have a long way to go to really utilize interactivity in art. Undertale showed me that games can be so much more than buzz cuts and quick time events. They can even be more than ecstatic fun or heart-wrenching plots. They can crawl inside you and make you think about yourself and who you are and what your place in the world is after trying to discover it in a virtual one. Games like Undertale make me so incredibly hopeful for the future of video games as art, and I'm so incredibly thankful that you've let me share my experiences with you. This has been Heartbox. Thank you so very much for watching, and please remember to smile. Hello, thank you so very much for watching my video on Undertale. I really hope you enjoyed it. Like the video if you liked it, dislike the video if you dislike it. If you really like the video and what I have in store for the channel, please subscribe. If not, that's perfectly okay too. Thank you for watching again, and have a wonderful day.